Good morning. Welcome to A Moment of Truth. I'm Stoney Kaiser, pastor of the Church of God of the Union Assembly here in Dalton, Georgia. What an honor it is to have you here with us today. This wonderful day that we are celebrating, celebrating Easter. Um, I'm sure most of you know that, but this is, this is, is the day that we set aside to recognize the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I remember as a child all the all the excitement I had of Easter where we'd have our Easter egg hunts and, and all the things that, that go along with Easter. But the main important thing that, that is sticks out in my mind was all the messages I got about how that this man had died for me and that on this third and appointed day he had resurrected and had went back to the Father. And today that's what we want to talk about. We want to celebrate a, a joyous occasion here that Jesus Christ had rose from the grave. It's evident that he did. Uh, the one thing that we know for sure in our life that helps us to know and realize that Jesus Christ did resurrect when he was on the earth, he said, it's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come. But if I go away, I'll pray the Father, and he'll send you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. We know beyond a shadow of a doubt that that has happened. When, Jesus, when Peter had told the people thereafter that they had crucified the Lord of glory, they, he told them, said in the Acts, the second chapter, said, you have taken and crucified this Jesus Christ. Uh, he said, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that this same Jesus whom you have crucified is both Lord and Christ. When they heard that, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter, men and brethren, what shall we do? They were, they were just... Oh, Lord, what can we do? We, we've crucified the, the man that, that uh, evidently died for our sins. What do we do? And Peter told them, said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's that promise that Jesus said would come to us, that comfort in our life. That's what we seek for. That's what we want people to know about. Uh, I think a lot of times about Cornelius and how that when he had, had uh, prayed to God, God had told him, said, you go and, and send men down to Joppa and, and there'll be a man by the name of Peter there that will tell you what you must do. There was something that that man needed to do. He, he was a devout man. He served. He prayed to God uh, every day. He prayed and was very earnest in what he'd done, but there was something that he needed and that was the Holy Ghost. And, and of course, we, as you all know the story that Cornelius sit down to Peter and Peter come back and, and talk to him the word of God. And, and while, those, while Peter yet spake those words, the Holy Ghost fell on Cornelius and all that heard the word that Peter had spoken. So we know that Jesus Christ of assuredly has resurrected. He has went back to the Father. Uh, I, I think there, uh, the day of Pentecost, when that Holy Ghost come back, uh, if those, those Pharisees, if they could have produced the body of Jesus Christ there, everything that Peter was saying there that day would have just been of no effect to them. But because it, the, he, his body was not there, because that Mary had went to the tomb and, and his body was gone, and when the disciples went there, his body was gone, when, when all of that come a, a, an effect and Jesus resurrected, we know that he went back and he prayed to the Father. And he sent that Holy Ghost back to dwell on the earth for us in our heart and in our life when we come to Jesus and repent of our sins. That's how we know for a surety that Jesus Christ has resurrected. Uh, today is, is Easter, of course, and it's, it's a wonderful time. I think about as a child growing up, all the people coming out to the church and, and uh, the ladies with their bonnets on and, and the, the young kids with their, with their suits very seldom ever wore a suit. Uh, most children didn't except for Easter, and they'd come in all dressed up. Mama wanted them to look pretty. Mama always went out and tried to buy us a really nice suit for Easter uh, to celebrate this resurrected Lord. Um, there's something to that about this having on a new suit. We can have on a new garment through this resurrection of Jesus Christ, through that body being resurrected from the dead. You know, when, when that third appointed morning, how gracious it must have been and how solemn it must have felt when they realized that he had raised, that, it, that he had went back to the Father. And, of course, we know that there's a, a lot of things that went on there. He was seen of different ones at different times before he actually went up and even told them at one time, said, Touch me not, for I have not ascended to the Father yet. 
But nevertheless, we know that Jesus Christ resurrected. History even states and shows that he, that he was born on the earth. Um, if, any, if anything would ever kind of give you a good idea that Jesus Christ was for real, there is nothing in this world that's ever separated time like the birth of Jesus Christ. So we know that he come. I mean, even history states that he was there in, in Jerusalem. But there was more to it than just Jesus Christ coming. The Bible tells us that if in this life only we had hope in Christ, we'd be of all men most miserable. But there's more to than just Jesus being born on the earth. He had to die. He had to suffer. He had to do all the things. If, if you want to turn with me, I have to actually have the book open already here to it. This is, in, uh, this is in Luke, the 24th chapter, and we'll start reading at the 44th verse for you. Uh, Luke 24 and 44. It said, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then, he, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. We know that he rose from the dead the third day. What a glorious day. Uh, as, as we read there in, in Acts where he told them, said, uh, let, me, let me turn over here. I believe it's in, in the first chapter of Acts. And, and let me read this to you. I didn't have this plan, but it's, it's good anyway. Uh, when Jesus was resurrected here in the Acts, the first chapter and the seventh verse, he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but you shall receive power, that is that Holy Ghost. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, that all come together. That is when it came there, that power of God came and that Holy Ghost came upon them. And you shall be witnesses both of me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up from them. He was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. A cloud received them out of their sight. Somebody resurrected with Jesus Christ, not just him. They was those that come up out of the grave after him. And we'll teach someday maybe on the first resurrection and who all it was that came out of the grave. That 144,000 that came out with, after Jesus Christ's his resurrection. He was the firstborn among many brothers. But he told them here, he said, when he resurrected, he said, when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men in stood by them in white apparel, which also said, You men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which was taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. So we're, we're expecting that same man that went away to come back someday. So when he does... What is it that we need to have in our life between now and then? There is something that that resurrection gave us. There is something that it gave us that without it, we would just be lost. We would, have, we would just be miserable. We'd be, uh, we would be naked and destitute of, of life. And just Everything would be just, just so miserable. I want to show you uh, in the next few messages that we give you what that resurrection done for us. Uh, it, was a, it was a great day. It was a great day. So when you go to church out today, I hope that you do. Uh, if you don't have a place to go, you're welcome to come down to the church. I'll go ahead and tell you. It's at 2211 South Dixie Highway. If you don't know that, we would love to have you there. I know there will be a great message for you there that the Lord will give you today. But if, if you don't know the Lord as your Savior, let me tell you what Jesus resurrecting done for you. It gave hope. If in this life, if this was all there was to it, we would eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we'd die. There'd be nothing else. There would be nothing for us to have any, any reason for living other than what we have right here. But the things that we see today, they're temporal. They're not forever. What you see out in, in the world today, those things that are seen are temporal. But the things that are not seen, they are eternal. That is eternal life. God made this world, and he, he put man in it, and man went against the will of God, and he started sinning. He listened to the devil, listened to his wife as she listened to the devil, and they partook of the forbidden fruit, 
And God cursed the ground. That's why we work for the sweat of our brow today. That's why women, when they have children, suffer in, in travail and pain to have those children. It's the curse that God put upon us. But there is hope of not ever having to feel any more pain again. There is hope of never watching our, our loved ones pass away. There is hope of all the tears and sorrow that we ever have in our life to just to be washed away. When, when Jesus Christ, uh, if you want to go with me before we get into this in Peter, we'll go to Revelation, the 21st chapter. He said he had saw God coming down from, 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 uh, from heaven. Uh, he had saw New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And in the third verse, it said, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them and be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. That's the day we're longing for. All of this come about through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We wouldn't have the hope of all of this if Jesus hadn't have come down and resurrected. But when, when God had sent Adam out of the garden and, and cursed the ground, that curse would stay here had Jesus Christ not come and went back to the Father. And this is what's going to happen when he does return. I told you in, in Acts 1 a while ago that that same Jesus that they saw go away uh, with the cloud is going to come like, in like manner. He's going to come with that same cloud, that 144,000, that new Jerusalem that came down from God out of heaven. He's going to come there. When, they, when he does, this is what's going to happen. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, neither crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. There's coming a day when God is going to take the curse off the earth, and he's going to have the river of life flowing through. Jesus Christ will come back. We'll see him as the angel splits the eastern skies and swears by him that liveth forever and ever. Time shall be no more. We won't have time to do anything else. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that we need to open up our heart and come to Jesus Christ. Before we go, I want to read this third verse of uh, 1 Peter, the uh, first chapter and the third verse. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I hope that you tune in for the next couple of weeks. I'm going to speak a little bit about what this hope is and where we get it. If you're living in a life where there is no hope, everything just seems to be dreadful, come to Jesus. Come where there is life. Come to where you can be a lively stone and be in God's great house. God wants you to know there is hope. And it come by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It brought us life. It brought us hope. It brought us peace. It brought us joy. When he went back to the Father, he prayed for God's Spirit to come and to dwell with us. It is here today. Come and visit us. Happy Easter to all. And God bless you is our prayer. Come down and visit the Church of God of the Union Assembly Incorporated. May God bless you is my prayer.